Today's video is all about a molecule called phenol. Now, phenol is actually an organic molecule uh, that has six carbon atoms, all in a hexagon, and it also connects uh, up to uh, one hydrogen on each of the carbons, except one of them, which is then connected to an oxygen and a hydrogen. So it's related to a molecule called benzene. Benzene would actually just have six hydrogens and six carbons. Perhaps that could be the subject of a future video. But this is phenol. Now, the, uh, the, 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 the chemical phenol is a really, really interesting chemical itself. I've actually got some phenol over here, and I've also happened to have uh, some uh, over here. So this is phenol crystals. Another name for phenol is carbolic acid. Now, carbolic is related to things like tar, uh, and it's actually an associated aromatic tarry smell uh, if this was uh, to waft into the air. But you don't really want it uh, to be wafting into the air too much because it is a massively, massively unpleasant um, uh, molecule to handle. For a start, it will kill you if you swap it. Okay, so it's very, very toxic. Um, it actually uh, is toxic if it touches your skin. That's why I'm wearing my uh, blue uh, nitrile gloves. And also, if I breathe it in, <laughs> it is also toxic as well. It's uh, especially toxic uh, if, um, if it's uh, exposed to the human being for a long period of time. So it can actually damage my uh, organs on prolonged exposure. So I only want to try and keep this around as much as possible. I want to try and store it away. Uh, I've got this fantastic fume cupboard over here. So all of the air uh, is being sucked through there and anything uh, that is likely to be coming from uh, the uh, chemicals is being drawn uh, well away from me. Uh, it's actually also suspected to cause some genetic uh, defects as well. And in amongst all of that, it can also uh, cause some really, really uh, dramatic skin burns if it's in contact uh, with the skin. It's actually quite, uh, quite severe. Now, I've got some uh, phenol crystals here. We've got two examples. We've got phenol crystals that should be in there. Uh, more on that in a second. But I'm just going to show you this phenol crystals. I can hear it uh, rattling. So if we just, uh, my camera person over here, if we can try and zoom in on uh, the phenol crystals. Now, as you can tell, it's it's pink. Hopefully you can see that. Tell me if you can, yep. So it's a pink, but it actually should be uh, colorless. Now, what actually happens is, uh, in contact with water in the atmosphere, it actually turns this pink color. Um, but if there's lots and lots of water that is um, uh, available over a long period of time, the phenol will actually turn into a liquid. Now this might be a little bit difficult to uh, to see, but I'm hoping that the, the, the light of the camera will allow you to see that there are indeed some crystals at the bottom of this bottle, are there? Okay, so there is also, uh, there's also a liquid, and I'm going to show you some of that liquid in a second. So I'm just gonna take some out. So we have assessed this for uh, health and safety reasons and uh, here we go there we go so got some some of this liquid now this liquid is actually the phenol that has dissolved in the water that it's absorbed from the atmosphere so we call it hygroscopic and we also call it um, uh, deliquescent. So it's hygroscopic. You just get a, a little zoom in here. Can you see that? Okay, so it's hygroscopic because it actually absorbs water from the atmosphere, but it's deliquescent as well uh, because it actually turns into a liquid once it does that. So that's actually quite fascinating. Um, this is from a saturated uh, sample. So the concentration of this is, I would estimate as being 0.8 moles uh, per decimeters cubed. So we've got enough here to, uh, to do an experiment with. Now, one of the things about uh, phenol is that it is, like I said, uh, this hexagonal shape. And in the presence of a chemical called bromine, 
uh, which is normally a very volatile liquid. We've actually got some bromine water. This is bromine water that again is in the cupboard. I'll, another day I will do a video on bromine. It's fascinating but dangerous. Um, when you have bromine in the presence of uh, phenol, what actually happens is you have uh, a preference of reacting in certain positions, not all of them. So what will actually happen is this hydrogen, for example, could be replaced by a bromine uh, atom. It doesn't necessarily replace this one, but it will replace this one. Not necessarily this one, but it will replace this one. So the way that we actually talk about uh, uh, these molecules is we pretend that this is the one position. This is two, three, four, five, six. So this is phenol, but it, the bromine will actually attach to the second, the fourth, and the sixth. So the name of the uh, substance that we're about to make is 246-tribromophenol, okay? So it's quite simple as to how we uh, can make this. All we need to do is we need to add some of the bromine water to the phenol. Now, what I'm expecting to have happen is it precipitate, but it will just go white and you'll find these white, uh, hopefully some, uh, some, some whiteness in the, in the liquid itself. So I'm about to do that. So with this uh, bromine, again, in the fume cupboard, very safely, it tends to evaporate, tends to vaporize. I'm gonna try and add it slowly. So hopefully I'll have two layers because uh, in rehearsal, this didn't tend to uh, mix. There we go. So have a zoom in on this. Perhaps you can see that the phenols tending to stay at the bottom. We'll give, give you a chance to have a good close up of this as well. Now I'm going to add more bromine water than I started uh, with phenol. So you can actually figure out which uh, layer is the phenol and which layer is the bromine. So I'm just going to take that out so we can have a look at it. There we go. So you can actually see that the top layer is definitely, there's more of that layer than there is of the, the phenol at the bottom. So what I'm going to now do is I'm just going to give it uh, a little shake to try and make it a little bit uh, mixed up to give a chance for the phenol to uh, react. Now when you're doing organic reactions, sometimes it's worth releasing the uh, the, the, the pressure uh, because sometimes you get some uh, vapors coming through and I think that's coming through so I'm just gonna zoom in on this one and you can actually see that it's actually gone uh, cloudy so the phenols actually decolorized the orange uh, bromine solution we saw that right at the end and there should be a, a, a white precipitate that is now starting to form now I must say that uh, it takes a little while to settle. So here's one that I did uh, earlier. And as you can see, you can actually see this white precipitate just above the, uh, the bromine water. So it's no longer uh, orange, we'll just focus on that, give you a chance to see. So I just hold both of them at the same time. Okay, is that all right? Excellent. Okay, so you see this precipitate that's in there and uh, if you leave it for a little longer then it will just it will just settle even further so with this example over here we really we try to vary the concentrations and we got some lovely lovely precipitate if we just focus right at the bottom of there you can actually see like a white powder this was with very very dilute uh, bromine water okay so that's a, a very unique reaction and that's really just positioning uh, our bromine and choosing to position the bromine wherever uh, wherever it's allowed to. There we go. Just to show you how this will form your precipitate and overnight you could just leave this and it will settle all at the bottom of the, uh, of the test tube. Thank you very much for watching. This is very, very unique uh, because uh, phenol is incredibly dangerous, incredibly carcinogenic. Bromine is incredibly dangerous as well, uh, affects your internal organs. But doing this uh, chemistry will allow us to try and understand what it is that's actually happening uh, at this molecular level. And it's really, really fascinating. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like because we risk our lives to get you this video. Bye-bye.